old bug, a work by Edgar Allan Poe. Anyone who has read more than one of Edgar Allan Poe's works knows of the recurring themes in his plots. Murder, mystery, grotesqueness. Of the three, mystery best describes the motif of the gold bug. It is a suspense adventure story with a long build-up leading to a climax followed by unveiled secrets in the end. Cryptography, pirates, mistaken insanity, the gold bug follows the narration of an intrepid doctor as he describes an old friend of his who on one occasion dragged him on a suspicious mission driven by questionable forces. His strange behavior at the time could only have meant one of two things. Was he mad? Or was there a reason behind his bizarre expedition? Suspense is a major aspect of the gold bug. And because of this, we begin our story halfway into it, where our characters are just beginning their grand adventure. Bewilderment is a key to experiencing the suspense of the gold bug. What Edgar Allan Poe wrote about, using two Caucasian main characters, a Negro servant, and a setting of 19th century Sullivan Island, South Carolina, remains exactly what it was, but for a few minor alterations. With a heavy heart, I accompanied my friend. We started about four o'clock, Legrand, Jupiter, and myself carrying the shovels. Why must we go on? The weather, it's so awful. Look at your poor servant. He's turning white. Why must we go on? We shall see. <coughs> to let Legrand possess a shovel, it all seemed to me to be of as much sense as entrusting an unstable adolescent with such an implement. The ants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah, and then they march by five by five, hurrah, hurrah. I find it impressive they can divide by five four things with brains of that size, and they all go round and down. Jupiter's demeanor was dogged in the extreme, and that damn bug were the sole words which escaped his lips during the journey. Undoubtedly, he was uneasy with the sight of Legrand contenting himself with the scarabus, which he carried, attached to the end of a bit of whipcord, whirling it to and fro with the air of a conjurer as he went. When I observed this last plain evidence of my friend's admiration of mind, I could scarcely refrain from tears. I thought it best, however, to humor his fancy, at least for the present, or until I could adopt some more energetic measures with chance of success. In the meantime, I endeavored, but all in vain, to sound him in regard to the object of the expedition. We will succeed. We will find the treasure. Okay, Master William, but it sure is cold! At this point, I fear for my friend's sanity. Having succeeded in including me to accompany him, he seemed unwilling to hold conversation upon any topic of minor importance, and to all my questions, vouchsafed no other reply than, we shall see.
Jupe. Yes, Mazza. Jupe climbing a tree you ever see. Then up with you as soon as possible, for soon it'll be too dark to see what we're about. How far must I go up, Massa? Get out the main trunk first, and I'll tell you which way to go. Stop. Here, take this with you. The bug, Massa? The go bug? What for must I tote the bug up the tree? Damn if I do! If you're afraid, Jupe, a great big Russian like you, to take hold of this harmless dead beetle, why, you can carry it up with this string. But if you do not take it up in some way, I'll be under the necessity of breaking your head with a shovel. W Will, why should he be concerned with the bug? We shall see! What the matter now, master? Always for to make fuss with the old Russian. Well, I ain't feel the bug. I don't feel no bug now. Which way must I go now, Maza? Keep up the largest branch, the one on this side. How high up are you? Ever so far, Maza. I can see the sky from top of this old tree, Maza. Never mind the sky, but attend to what I say. How many limbs are there on your side? Count how many limbs are below you. William, I fear for your Russian. What do you say? We shall see. One, two, three, four, five. I did pass five leaves on this side, Massa. Now, Jupe, I want you to work your way out on that limb as far as you can. Let me know if you see anything strange. But Will, what should be so strange in a tulip tree? You shall see. What, what do you see, Jupiter? 